you okay? All right, so we're gonna go over the water cycle, the carbon cycle, and the nitrogen cycle. Okay, so the water cycle, here we have the water. The sun beats down on it and makes the particles move faster. And when those liquid particles start moving faster, they change phase and turn into a gas, which is water vapor. That process is called evaporation. Then as it rises in the air, it cools, it turns back to a liquid, that's called condensation and it makes clouds. When the clouds get too full of water, then it falls as precipitation, which can be like rain, sleet, snow. Then it hits either like a pond or a lake or the land it runs off into the water. Okay. I don't recognize the first name, so you need to change your name. If you don't know how, you hit the three buttons on the side, it'll change your name. Hi, Tyler. Okay. All right, let's see, Tyler in. Okay, hey, Tyler, how are you, honey? Okay. We can unmute him. Okay, Tyler, I have you unmuted, honey, in case you want to ask any questions. Oh, look, here comes Riley. All right. Okay. Hi, Riley. I've unmuted you so you can um, talk. You need to turn your camera on, hon. Riley, you got to turn your camera on so I can see you, so I know it's you. It's the new rule. There you go. Hi. <laughs> okay. All right. And up. Okay. All right. So let's start over. Okay. So here's the sun. The sun beats down on the water. The liquid water particles start to move faster until they change phases from liquid to gas. And that gas is called water vapor. That process is called evaporation. Then as the water vapor rises, it cools, turns back into a liquid and forms a cloud. That's called condensation. Then when the cloud gets so full of water it can't hold it anymore, it falls as precipitation. That can be rain, sleet, or snow. It runs down and either hits like a pond or a lake or a river or the land and runs off back into the water. It also gets absorbed by the land and can form aquifers, which is like a river of groundwater underneath. And then the whole process starts over again. Now, when you see the word cycle, cycle means circle. Um, so there's no beginning and there's no end. So remember when we learned about plants and, and um, photosynthesis, we said that the roots absorb the water. It goes up the tube, the xylem, into the chloroplast so photosynthesis can take place. When there is extra water, that water is going to lead through evaporation out of the holes in the leaf called the stomata. That's called transpiration here. And then it's a whole cycle. This is constantly taking place over and over and over. Okay. Are there any questions on the water cycle? Um, just a hint. When I'm going over the next slide, you might want to take a screenshot of it and so you can make sure your GoFormative is um, correct. So this is the one that was in your GoFormative. And so here's the water, the sun beats down on it, turns to water vapor through evaporation. As it rises, it cools and forms clouds. That's condensation. When the cloud gets too full, it falls as precipitation, rain, sleet, or snow. When plants have an excess of water, it comes out of the stomata through evaporation called transpiration. Then the precipitation hits the ground and runs off 
and back into the water or down into the ground for groundwater. Any questions on the water cycle? No, you good? Okay. All right, let's look at the carbon cycle, okay? So remember again, there's no beginning or end. So the trees give off oxygen, the cow breathes that oxygen in and gives off carbon dioxide, and then the tree takes that carbon dioxide in for photosynthesis. So it's a whole cycle. Now this one's much simpler than the one that you had in your formative. So here's the one for formative, okay? So here's the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. That's the one on top. Then that the trees and all the plants take in the carbon dioxide to create photosynthesis, which is food for the plant. The plant is food for the deer. The deer takes in oxygen that the tree is giving off and then gives off through cellular respiration the carbon dioxide. Now, as the deer eats the plants for food, then the same thing happens over and over. Now, eventually the deer is going to die and its body decomposes and over millions of years it turns into fossil fuels. That's like coal and natural gas. And then we burn that in our factories. That's called combustion. And that puts, you can see right here, that puts the carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. Okay, so let's do it again. So carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere. The trees and plants take it in to perform photosynthesis, creating food for them. Then the plants are food for the animals. The trees and plants give off that oxygen that the deer takes in. The deer through cellular respiration gives off the carbon dioxide. The deer eventually dies, its body decomposes, and over millions of years, it turns into coal, natural gas, fossil fuels, and then we burn that in, through combustion, and that puts carbon dioxide into the air. Okay? Hey, Tyleek, you've already missed two of them, honey, because you're so late. Turn your camera on. Tyleek, you got to turn your camera on, honey. It's the new rule. Tyleek, if you don't turn your camera on, I have to take you out. There you go. Hey, you've already missed the two of the cycles. We're on our last one now. Okay, so the last one we had was the nitrogen cycle, okay? So the nitrogen is in the atmosphere and that's N2. This type of nitrogen we cannot use, okay? So what happens is um, the nitrogen is in the soil and the plants take that in. When the deer eats the plants, it gets the nitrogen. Then when it poops it out, it goes down into the soil and the bacteria fixes it and turns it into ammonia and then nitrite and nitrates, which is nutrients for the plants to make them grow and it's a whole cycle. When the deer dies, again, the bacteria fixes it as it decomposes and it also performs denitrification, which puts that N2 back into the air. So let's look at the one that you all had to do, okay? So here's the nitrogen. Now, the air all around us is 78% nitrogen. It's 21% oxygen and then 1% water vapor, carbon dioxide, argon, that kind of thing. So the majority of our air, 78%, is nitrogen, but we can't use that nitrogen and animals can't use that nitrogen. So what happens is the bunny eats the plant, it gets the nitrogen that's in the plant, and then it poops it out as waste. 
that waste goes down into the soil and the night the bacteria in the soil fixes it so that's called nitrogen fixation and returns the nitrogen to the plants through nitrates and nitrates then the bunny can eat it and it's a whole cycle okay also when that waste gets down here the bacteria some of the bacteria do denitrification which is putting nitrogen back into the air. Now eventually the bunny dies, death and decay, and that goes down into the soil. The bacteria fixes it, nitrogen fixation, puts the nitrogen back into the plants, the bunny eats the plant, and it's a whole cycle. Also denitrification's taking place, putting N2 or nitrogen back into the air. The bunny dies when he gets old, death and decay and puts nitrogen back into the soil. The bacteria fixes it, gives that nitrogen to the plant so they can grow for the bunny to eat. The bacteria also perform denitrification, which puts the N2 or nitrogen back into the air. So hint, hint, take a screenshot, okay? All right, are there any questions? You can, well, let me put a chat up in case you don't want to talk, but you're welcome to unmute yourself and talk if you'd like, or you can send me a chat. Okay, a few of you are really late coming in, and what we started with was Clever. Did anybody have any trouble getting into Clever and then Discovery Ed to watch all the videos that I put in there? No? Okay. Does anybody have any questions on any of your assignments or anything? Here's your Google Classroom. So the stuff that I have put in, here's your class schedule. Okay. So if you want to keep things straight, you can see Monday is where I ask you to go to the Clever page and watch the videos on the water, carbon, and nitrogen cycle. Okay. Now, some people had trouble clicking on the videos and having them work. Um, what Clever said to do was open Discovery Ed, then open, there's a button in Clever on my homepage. You click on Discovery Ed. Then you open a new tab, go back to Clever, and then they said you'll be able to click on the videos and watch those. The brain pops in there are also very informative, okay? Then you had this go formative to do, okay? And then I ask you to go to study jams, watch the water cycle, carbon cycle, and nitrogen cycle. Take the quizzes, those are just for yourself. Don't send them to me, those are just to help you learn. So in your classwork, the, the two things you should have had done are the cycles of nature that we just went over uh, and then the cycles of matter, okay? Which is a quiz is, and here's your code. Okay, are there any questions on the week's work? Okay. Well, everybody have a wonderful weekend. And if you need anything, remember I have that Google Voice phone number down in here that you can call me, okay? Or you can text me on that as well. And then um, you can also email me, all right? No more questions? No questions? Okay, guys, have a wonderful weekend. Bye.